Hello everyone, in this video we're going to go over several different models of the eye. So first I'm going to start with this model over here. It shows you some of the accessory structures and also some of the structures on the anterior view of the eye. So first we're going to start with the eyelids. So the anatomical term for eyelids is palpebra. This is going to be the superior palpebra. This is going to be the inferior palpebra. You could also use the term upper. So this is upper palpebra, and this is going to be the lower palpebra. Next, the area where the two eyelids come together are called commissure. So this right here is the lateral commissure, and this one over here is the medial commissure. Now, how do we identify medial versus lateral? Um, the best way, really, is to find the lacrimal gland. This is the lacrimal gland over here. This is the gland that produces tears. And this is always going to be lateral. Um, you also have the lacrimal caruncle, and that's this pink structure over here. The caruncle is the basically that little structure that's going to produce the waxy, um, substance around your eyes when you wake up in the morning so that's what this little gland like structure here does Be careful not to mix this up with the medial commissure this is the commissure over here this is the area where the two eyelids meet so again lacrimal caruncle and this is the lacrimal commissure um, the medial commissure so when the tears are produced laterally right here, they get excreted over the eyes by these excretory ducts over here. They wash over the eyes, and then they're gonna get drained medially by these lacrimal canaliculi. Canaliculi basically means tiny canal. So in order for the tears to move into these canals, there has to be an opening. Now if we look closely, we could see that there's going to be a little hole over here and a little hole up here. This is called the puncta, the lacrimal puncta. This is the opening into these little canals over here. So the tears are going to move into the puncta and then into the lacrimal canaliculi and pour into the lacrimal sac. This right here is the lacrimal sac. And then um, moving down, it will become narrow and become the nasolacrimal duct. So this area basically connects to the nasal cavity and that's why when you cry, um, you get a runny nose. Now I'm gonna take this off so we could look at some other structures. This white layer of the eye is called the sclera. This glassy membrane on top of it, you can see there's a glassy membrane here. This is called the cornea. Underneath that, you have the iris, which is the colored part of the eye. And then you have the opening, which is called the pupil. You can see some of the muscles around the eye, but I want to use another model for that. This one is a little bit better for looking at the different muscles. So there are six muscles around the eye that move basically the eyeball. Um, it's important to understand medial versus lateral. So the best way to identify lateral is by the lacrimal gland. Again, lacrimal gland is always going to be lateral. Therefore, this muscle over here, this is going to be the lateral rectus. The one on the other side, the opposite side, is going to be the medial rectus over here, superior rectus, and down below, right here, you have the inferior rectus. Rectus means straight, and the muscle fibers basically run straight. So therefore, there's going to be four rectus muscles around the eyeball that move, help move the eye. Now, there's also going to be two oblique muscles. This one up here is called the superior oblique. This is the tendon to it, so the rest was cut. And then you also have the inferior oblique. You could just see a portion of it down here. Um, you can also see them on this particular model, but you have to put this part back on to see where the lacrimal gland would be. We can see that the lacrimal gland is here, so therefore, this would be the lateral rectus, and this would be the medial rectus. 
Now I want to look at some of the layers that are within the eye. So we talked about the sclera, that's the white layer. This is the choroid, this is the pigmented layer under the sclera. Um, this is a very vascular layer, so it provides blood supply to the eye, but also um, it's pigmented, so it prevents light from scattering inside the eyes. Remember that light needs to focus on a very specific spot in the eyes in order for vision to happen. Here you have the iris, the colored part, we already talked about it. And again, here's the cornea, the glassy membrane. And here is the pupil. I'm gonna see if I could take off one more layer. So we could look at some of the other things that are inside. So here's the vitreous humor over here. As I talked about it in class, behind the lens, you're gonna have this vitreous humor, because remember, this the eye kind of has like a cavity, and this cavity is going to be filled with this gel-like substance called vitreous humor. The inner layer here, the innermost layer of the eye, this is called the retina, right here. Again, this is the lens. And these over here are the ciliary bodies, and I'll talk about it a little bit more in just a second. Now we're gonna move on to the cross section of the eye, right here. So you could see the sclera over here. Um, here's the choroid, the dark layer and the retina is gonna be this yellow layer. So the retina is gonna contain photoreceptor cells, so basically this is the layer that makes vision possible. In front, you could see the cornea. This is the glassy membrane, basically in front of the iris. Here you could see the iris, over here and over here. This is the pupil, the opening to the eye, and this is the lens over here. So if you ever take it out or if you've dissected an um, eyeball, you know that it looks like a little marble. Um, this is flexible. So even though it's glass here in the eye, it's flexible. And it has the ability to become flat or bulge to focus light on the right place. So it depends on if you're looking at something that's nearby or far away. This right here, this is all of this is called the ciliary body. So we're looking at a cut portion of it, but really it's this over here. It goes around the eye, it's circular. Now ciliary body can be divided into two parts. You have the muscles here, these are called the ciliary muscles. And then you also have the ciliary processes. They're kind of like finger-like extensions over here. And um, they basically connect the lens by the suspensory ligaments or ciliary zonules. You could use whatever term you like. Suspensory ligaments are basically these lines over here. They're like little strings, basically. They attach to the lens, and this is basically what allows the lens to change shape. Remember that in front of the lens, there is also going to be a fluid here in this chamber, in this area, this cavity, and that's going to be aqueous humor. So aqueous humor is basically being produced and drained all the time, but vitreous humor is basically something that's there. You're born with it and it stays there. Um, aqueous humor is important for basically maintaining the intraocular pressure of the eye. Here we're looking at some photoreceptor cells. You're going to find these in the innermost layer of the retina. So first, the light is gonna come in this way. So you could see that basically the arrow is pointing this way. These are the ganglion cells over here. These are going to be bipolar cells. And these are the photoreceptor cells, which are the cones and the rods. So if you look at them close by, um, the cones are gonna tend to be short and fat, and the rods are going to be skinny and long. Cones are for day vision, or in other words, colored vision. 
cones and rods are for night vision or in other words, um, night vision. Yeah, and I think that covers just about everything that we need to know with the eye.